September 2nd. Gren's got me and Roth on guard duty down here where we're more likely to get killed by the damn watch in the village. His money's good, but he's just one of them people you want to smack. Got one of them faces. I swear one of these days will take his holier than thou attitude and start ragging on about what an expert treasure hunter he is, and I'll just lose it and jam my sword right into his pasty little face. We got some delivery of supplies and food and stuff this morning. Managed to bargain a trade for a couple of hostages. They'd better break through soon and capture some more. The only one we got left is that fool who tried being a hero and got himself stabbed up. He ain't gonna last much longer, I'll wager.
Chief Engineer's Log, September 2nd. These mechanical contraptions were not built for the humid weather and unpredictable rainstorms down here. The hammers think they're so great, but the tropical conditions play havoc with the electrics. I think I fixed the generator so the street lights won't go out again, but I'll be buggered if I'm coming back to fix it again today. I'm off to see Wendy down the docks, get plastered, and try to slip my hand up her skirt. Who's there? Hello? Diary, 1st September. No sooner had I finished the new ceremonial sword for the commander than all this fighting starts in the castle. The builder only knows what's going on up there. All I know is that unless it all gets sorted out soon, I'm not getting paid. Luckily, I still have that nugget I smelted from the ore Jameis since then. The fool has no idea the value of his land. Maybe I should move to the city, open a jeweler with the startup capital so thoughtfully provided by my imbecilic supplier. With a bit of luck, I'll have some more supplies on tomorrow's boat, so at least I won't be twiddling my thumbs if the situation in the castle doesn't get resolved.
Who's that? Please don't play games. Dear Miriam, I think I shall be returning to the city just as soon as I can get a job in one of the trading vessels passing through here. Life on this island is not the exciting adventure I had hoped. Instead, it is a quiet and boring little town with nothing much to do besides hard work. And the weather is quite disagreeable to my sensibilities. It is always hot, even in the winter months, yet it rains a warm torrent most every day at various unpredictable times. One becomes soaked to the bone and drenched with sweat at the same time, a most unwelcome sensation. Give my love to Prue and the twins. Kind regards, Philip. that there. I saw something. Six. Aye, you're a busty wench and no mistake, said the pirate, all coarse manners and an uncouth nature. I rather think you should keep such opinions to yourself, said Amelia. Her face felt hot at the attentions of this lecherous sailor, but the thrill of the danger she was in excited her none the less. The pirate smiled and continued with his work, unloading heavy crates from the ship. Sweat glistened from his bare, muscled arms. Amelia gasped and looked away. She was all a quiver with strange new feelings. 
Breathing heavily, her bosom rose and fell within her constructive bodice. She became acutely aware of the fabric rubbing her, not unpleasantly. When she looked up, he was there before her, a wicked glint in his black, devilish eyes. His rough sailor's hands gripped her wrists. She gasped involuntarily, but made no effort to resist with. Finn's Diary, Thursday 2nd. Business has been slow, but I'm doing well enough to stay afloat. If I could only find a way to sabotage that conniving son of a baboon jock next door. Every time I legitimately locate a good fishing area, that stinking fat git comes along and cheats me out of it by fishing the area dry. I have a good mind to knock some manners from that thick head of his, perhaps with a good frozen solid hat on. 